Hi, everyone. I'm Bethany Lozada. Thank you so much for joining me today in my podcast, Overcomers, where we talk about how to overcome life's difficulties with a friend, faith, and a cup of tea. Today, I'm drinking lemon balm, which can be very calming and good for stress relief. We're in a series right now called Overcome by Anxiety to Overcomer, a mother and daughter's faith journey prevailing through anxiety. In the next several podcasts, I want to focus on how we can help our children live a full life with anxiety. Today, we're going to talk about teaching our children perseverance when met with anxiety. As parents, it is so important that we learn how to accept when our child does have anxiety. It's so easy to get caught up and overwhelmed by all the unknowns. I know when my daughter had her anxiety, I was so worried about whether she would struggle with anxiety for the rest of her life and the unknown of what if she has another anxiety crisis right around the corner. I needed to live in the day to help my daughter manage her anxiety in the present and not worry about all of the what ifs, all those things that I can't control. We can't change the past or predict the future, but we can do our best in the present moment to create change and healthy mindsets. If your child is drowning in the water and you go running in after them, but you don't know how to swim yourself, you're going to end up freaking out, flailing around, and both of you are going to drown. The same goes if you're going through an anxiety crisis. If your child is stuck in their anxiety and feels like they're drowning and looking for help and you go in running after them, but you don't even know what's going on, how to help them, you're going to end up freaking out too and you're both going to feel like you're drowning. The first thing you need to do is accept that they have anxiety, calm yourself down, get help, and then implement whatever it is that you're learning and those tools to help your child. Once you've accepted that your child has anxiety and are calm, your child's going to be able to accept the fact that they have anxiety and feel calm about it too. And you can let your child know that they can live a full and abundant life with anxiety. Once your child knows what anxiety is, and how it affects them, they can work at managing it and feeling more of a sense of control over it. If you don't accept the fact that they do have anxiety, you're going to be stuck in denial. You're not going to get the help you need, your child needs, and they're not going to be able to get better. One way that you can help your child manage their anxiety is by strengthening their anti-anxiety muscles. What are those different character traits that you can strengthen in your child so that those anti-anxiety muscles get stronger and that anxiety muscle gets weaker? Today, we're going to talk about the anti-anxiety muscle of perseverance. As your child is growing these muscles, they're going to feel stronger, healthier, and more capable. Perseverance is something in our culture today and society that's really lacking. I feel like parents are more likely to try to minimize any difficulty their child might face or try to help their child avoid it at all costs. Sometimes you can see this in school where if a child gets a poor grade, the parent's more likely just to blame the teacher instead of consider that their child might be at fault for something. Or children who just want to do something when they feel like it, and they're missing the sense of responsibility in their lives. We are teaching our kids to avoid any type of difficulty or to find a way around it instead of a way through it. Hardships are a fact of life. Difficulties is part of the human experience. We need to teach our children to expect them and how to navigate through them. I know when my daughter went through her anxiety crisis, it really opened my eyes to this issue of not being prepared for difficulties and not having enough perseverance in our lives. I knew as a parent, I wanted to make a bigger effort in teaching my children first to expect that they are going to have difficulties in this life, then how they can make their way through the difficulties 
to accept that they have them, and then most importantly, how to overcome whatever hardship or difficulty they may face in their lives. In my daughter's situation, her biggest issue and challenge she faced was her anxiety. For your child, it might be something like dyslexia or being left out of a group of friends. Maybe as they get older, it'll be being looked over for a job promotion, losing a job, or a breakup that they have. Strengthening this anti-anxiety muscle of perseverance is going to help them in whatever trials or difficulties that they're going to face down the road at any point in their life. How can we strengthen this anti-anxiety muscle? First, by encouraging and motivating our children in something that they struggle with. And then not to let them give up unless there's a really good reason why. My son's type of anxiety is being an avoider and a worrier. He wants to keep himself from trying anything new and doesn't want to do anything that he doesn't feel really good at. When he was around 10 years old, we decided to switch him from recreational soccer to a select team. He found when he went to the tryouts, he made the team and realized that this team was very competitive and it had a lot higher expectations and was much more intense. And he decided he would rather quit the team. Uh, He knew that for him to stay on that team would require a lot from him to really persevere and work at it. And he would rather just be comfortable and be on a team that required less of him and he knew he could be at the top and not have to struggle with it. I understand the desire to feel comfortable and something to be easy because that's the way I want to feel too. But I knew what my son was truly struggling with, that he was anxious about the what ifs. What if I let my teammates down? What if I don't meet my coach's expectations or What if I'm the weakest link on the team? That's what he was truly struggling with, his fears of the what ifs and his idea of failure. I knew that I wanted my son to learn the lesson that he can do difficult things. And it was important for him to stay on that team so he could learn that lesson, that he could persevere through that. And if something was difficult, through that difficulties where he was going to learn, stretch, and grow. If he didn't learn that lesson now as a child, it would just get more difficult for him as he gets older and having to learn the lesson later down the road. He needed to learn perseverance and persistence when met with his own comfort resistance. Before every practicing game, I'd spend time praying with him and speaking truths to him, letting him know that the most important things is that he gives 100% of his effort, that he's an encouraging teammate, that he listens well, and he does everything to the glory of God, that most importantly, he's on that team and doing his best for Jesus. I also let him know to expect that he is going to make mistakes. He is learning and he will grow and that's okay to make mistakes. Just don't focus on them and try to learn from them. Also, his club provided uh, visualization techniques, walkthrough audios that he could listen to and he started doing that before all of his games and it really helped him focus on what he could be doing in that game and positive actions rather than on all these anxious feelings that he was having. He was able to be proactive instead of reactive. And he really learned that he cannot control the outcome of the game or a situation. But what he could do is be present in every moment, making the best decision possible, not focusing on any mistakes he's already made or the possibility of future ones, but making a good decision in that present moment. Now he loves that team so much, enjoys going to games and practices, has bonded with his teammates, and is growing in confidence. And that anti-anxiety muscle of perseverance is getting stronger and stronger, and that 
anxiety muscle is getting weaker and weaker. And when it starts coming up in the anxiety, he notices it and he uses his visualization techniques and the truth that he knows to squelch it out and keep persevering through it. In the end, I knew the lessons that I wanted him to learn from being on that team were first, that he could do hard things and secondly, not to limit himself from trying new things out of fear. Grit and resilience is born in the battlefield of problem solving and persistently pushing through struggles. We need to empower our children and not enable them, equip them for whatever they are facing. When my daughter was in middle school, she was struggling with some of the math lessons and had a lot of questions. She tried asking me, but I learned these math lessons years ago in a completely different way. So I was of no help to her. But I remembered at the beginning of the year, she had to read through a handbook for the school and it let them know that it's the student's responsibility to understand whatever material they're being taught that day when they go home. And if they don't have an understanding, they can go and ask questions to their teachers until they figure it out. So I let my daughter know, read this section, and look, you can ask questions. You're responsible of understanding that material when you get home that day. The next day, she started asking her questions to her teachers especially math, but then to all the different classes. She would go before school, between classes, lunchtime, after school. She was persistent. If they weren't there at one time, she'd come back at another. But she made sure that she got whatever answer she needed before she came home from school that day. And she learned to become persistent and to persevere. Years later, still now, I think every day at school, she probably goes up to a teacher to ask for clarification or a question of some sort. She's continually practicing this and has cultivated in her this perseverance and persistence in her coursework and making sure she has understanding. When our children are in elementary school, we as parents have to advocate more on their behalf. But as they enter into middle school, we can take the role of advising them, coaching them, putting them in a certain direction, and then teaching them how to advocate for themselves, whatever it is that they need. In my daughter's situation, she just needed the direction and the knowledge of how she could go and get the help she needed. Those are two examples for my children in ways that I was able to work on their anti-anxiety muscle of perseverance. But for you and your child, the important thing is to identify a situation where you know that they could start practicing perseverance and working towards that. It might be for a teenager getting a job after school, for a toddler learning to share with their toys, or a middle schooler how to study for tests after school. Whatever it is, make sure that you're motivating your child to pursue that perseverance And don't be afraid to use rewards. Reward them when they are showing perseverance by positive affirmations in your words or by using a reward system like we talked about last week. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 and verse 12 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Even in God's word, we see the call to persevere and that we are going to face trials and difficulties of many kinds. But it is through the furnace the fire that we are refined and we become more like Jesus. We have a choice whether to lean into the process and persevere persevere through our trials by keeping our eyes on Jesus and the end reward of being in heaven with him someday, or we can succumb to the heat, pressure, frustration, and disappointments of whatever trials we're facing. The truth that you can speak to yourself and to your child is that nothing in this world 
can fulfill you more than walking closely with God and experiencing the joy that He can give to you in your life, no matter the hardest difficulty you could ever face. I'm going to close this today in a prayer. Dear Father, I lift up my friend to you today and ask that you would help them to learn to persevere through life's difficulties and teach their child how to persevere through whatever mountain they are facing right now. I pray that they would speak words of truth and encouragement to their child and prepare them to meet hardships in this world. Let their hearts know that you will always be with them and that you can use any trial to refine them to be more like you. Let us raise children that are resilient and who know that they can do hard things. In your name, Jesus, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to you next time on Overcomers with a Cup of Tea.